Episodes 1 and 2 of Video Games on Video covered a pretty random collection of Japanese video game VHS tapes from yesteryear, but that's not the case this time. Episode 3 is all about tapes related to two gaming companies that for many people are synonymous with the hobby. So much so that to a lot of the older generations, saying their names just means video games on the whole. Of course I'm talking about Nintendo and Sega. And from here on we'll take a look at 5 Nintendo-centric VHS tapes from the 1990s and 5 from Sega in a 10-tape Video Games on Video Showdown episode. Time to relive one of the oldest schoolyard rivalries in gaming, only this time through digitized analog video. Let's -a go! Or should I be saying, gotta go fast! Ah, whatever, let's just start the showdown. Kicking off the renewed rivalry is a 1991 tape from Nintendo, the Super Mario Bros. 4 Super Mario World Guide video. Published by Pony Canyon and retailing for 3,900 yen tax included, this 45-minute video is exactly what the cover claims it is, a video strategy guide. However, instead of going through the entire game, it's an abridged overall look at Super Mario World's world, only going through select levels, but also allowing the viewer to enjoy the game's final boss fight and ending. Raw gameplay is commented on by the relatively famous DJ and voice actor Corby, or Katsuya Kobayashi, who provides an upbeat and comical narration throughout. Something to mention about the gameplay, it's not an expert run or super play, and there are times where the player just seems to be pretty bad at the game. I think it's intentional, but who knows? A couple of bonuses in this tape include a short animated segment starring Yoshi and Mario, drawn by Yoichi Kotabe, who was the series artist in the early years of the Super Mario franchise, as well as an amazing stop-motion animated commercial for the Super Famicom and Mario World. That's about the best damn Bowser you'll ever see. And a physical bonus it comes with is a nice little fold-out poster and world map. I love stuff like that. This is a pretty decent tape for Super Nintendo and Mario fans, however it's not the only video strategy guide for Super Mario World. I'm sure we'll take a look at this one from GTV in the future. ちょっと随分危ないところに来ちゃったんじゃないの。おおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
You'll learn some basic tips, tricks, and techniques for the various brushes available so you can create and mimic some real works of real art, as well as get some advanced guidance on how to utilize some of the game's tools in more innovative ways. Additionally, there are tutorials on composing music, producing animation, and some clips of a few fellows playing the Flyswatter minigame, complete with live facial reactions. The two main artists credited at the end are Ashura Ito, or Benimaru Ito, and Hirokazu Tanaka, two men who were big players throughout the history of Nintendo, especially Mr. Tanaka. Other guest artists are featured as well at the end in a gallery segment, such as the creator of the extremely popular Chibi Maruko-chan manga, Momoko Sakura. I know I've probably talked way too much about Mario Paint already, but I need to mention that Mario Paint guide just once more, since it functions much like a companion piece to this tape. It pretty much covers all the things found in this video and more, making tape and book a fabulous pair of Nintendo collectibles. In the 90s, long before decent internet access and speeds, video game publishers would often send promotional tapes to electronics and gaming outlets to play on TV sets and kiosks in order to generate buzz around their titles. Sega produced some of the best of these with its bi-monthly Sega video game magazine line, starting from the 16-bit era and continuing into the 32-bit space. These tapes featured narrated previews of upcoming games and other special advertising content, with many of them hosted by a digitally animated Sonic the Hedgehog. The one we're looking at in this episode is the June edition from 1994, which covers titles from May to August of that year on the Mega Drive, Mega CD, and Game Gear. It's a 60-minute tape, but loops a 30-minute segment twice. Sonic 3 had just been released in Japan at the time, so it was the main focus of the tape which also features the game's TV spot. But the other big scoop was the start of the Mega Role-Playing Project, a campaign that saw some heavy-hitting RPGs come out toward the end of Sega's 16-bit console's life cycle. This tape looks at two of these titles, Shin Soulseiki Ragna Senti, known as Crusader of Senti or Soleil in the West, and Shining Force CD, the upgraded port compiling the Game Gear's Shining Force Guided 1 and 2. Other titles that get the spotlight are Panorama Cotton and Super Street Fighter 2 for the Mega Drive, Record of Lotus War for the Mega CD, and Coca-Cola Kid for the Game Gear, though there are quite a bit more than just these. In addition to the aforementioned Sonic 3 commercial, a Game Gear commercial for the Plus One promotion is included, where a copy of Sonic Drift would come packed with the system. It's an ad straight out of the 90s, both literally and stylistically. This volume of Sega Video Magazine came out just a few months before the launch of the Sega Saturn, the launch of the company into the 32-bit orbit, and represents some of the best of Sega in the 90s. Any one of these tapes are pretty hard to come by since they were only intended to be shown for a brief period of time in shops, so if you manage to find one, consider yourself one lucky SEGA fan. Our third Nintendo tape is the Mario Kirby Meisaku video, or Mario and Kirby Masterpiece video. HAL Laboratory was behind production of this tape, which stars the pleasantly plump plumber as well as the pink puffy powerhouse. Although Not For Sale is printed on the cover, this tape was sent out to those who ordered it by mail through the magazine Shougaku Ichinense, a publication for children entering or in the first grade, one that's still in circulation today. Yes, Japan had and still has magazines for everything. For a mere 700 yen plus 270 yen for shipping, you got a 20-minute tape that teaches the 80 essential kanji characters that kindergartners would need to know when entering the first grade. Quite useful for those hoping to pass competitive elementary school entrance exams. The kanji are taught through two stories, the first being about Mario trying to recover Princess Peach's stolen treasure from the dastardly Wario, who is still a relatively new adversary for Nintendo's mascot in red. Spoiler, the treasure ends up being a box of manga. Who knew Peach was such a dork? The second story involves Kirby trying to reunite a lost puppy with his mother, believing that King Dedede has kidnapped her. 
But in a plot twist you probably saw coming, the king was no villain after all and was actually trying to help the mother dog find her pup. And in the end they all have a nice little party. Also, 8-bit era Kirby is the best Kirby. As the stories are being told, key kanji characters are revealed in real time for students to study. And after both tales conclude, there's some review of all the kanji that appeared throughout the narration. And speaking of narration, the voice of the narrator may be familiar to hardcore Japanese animation fans, as it's spoken by Mayumi Tanaka, the legendary voice actress behind characters such as Luffy from One Piece, Pazza from Studio Ghibli's Laputa, and Krillin from Dragon Ball, among so many more iconic roles. A little bonus at the end of the tape is advertising the next issue of the magazine, as well as upcoming goods readers can purchase, including a sweet Yoshi camera. Anyway, this VHS tape is a fun way for children, or new learners of Japanese, to memorize kanji and enjoy a couple of cute stories about their favorite game characters. A retail Sega tape at last, and what a whopper it is. It's the 1995 Sega CG World Best Collection, a tape that was only available for sale at the hefty price of 5,800 yen, tax included, that contains 61 minutes of seven of Sega's most popular 3D arcade hits from the early and mid 90s. The games that include the groundbreaking polygonal racer Virtual Racing, the even more groundbreaking 3D fighting game Virtual Fighter, Daytona USA, vehicular action combat shooter Desert Tank, the light gun shooter and my personal favorite from the lineup, Virtual Cop, the popular sequel to Virtual Fighter 2, VF2, and Sega Rally Championship, still one of the greatest rally racers ever made. Each game gets a brief introduction talking about the arcade board it was developed on as well as some history and background details, and then it's on to an expert playthrough, and that's really it. I guess the point of the tape is to bring part of the arcade experience home in video form, and while it's not the most exciting VHS you'll own, it certainly gets the job done, kinda? Personally, I would have rather spent the 5800 yen back then on an actual game or maybe even 58 rounds of me getting destroyed in Virtual Fighter 2. But anyway, the Sega Amusement CG World Best Collection is one of many similar VHS tapes that were produced in the era, a pricey collection of Let's Plays of the day. Amusement CG World Best Collection Sega による最新最高の技術によって作り出されたバーチャルリアリティの世界セガアミューズメント CG ワールドハイパーリアルなモーションハイスピードなアクション美しいグラフィックの数々はまさに実写を超えた最先端のビジュアルイメージを生み出したその迫力と興奮の CG ゲームをベストチョイスした CG ワールドのスペシャルエディションセガアミューズメント CG ワールド Now, let's start it up. Today, Pocket Monsters, or Pokemon as it's more commonly known, is an ingrained part of childhoods and popular culture just about everywhere in the world. But in 1996, it was a new video game franchise from Nintendo published on its ever-surviving Game Boy handheld, gaining popularity at a lightning-fast rate, a phenomenon that was pretty much contained only within Japanese shores for a couple of years. These early days of Pokemon allowed the series to explore some pretty bold and experimental approaches, which is very apparent in our next VHS tape. Pokemon Ieru Kana? Pokemon Kakeru Kana? Or Can You Name the Pokemon? Can You Draw the Pokemon? This tape, published by Pikachu Records and sold in stores in 1996 for 2500 yen plus tax, contains 7 music videos over the span of 26 minutes. It's related more to the trading card game than the video game that inspired it, but whatever, it's all still part of the Pokemon machine. The first song is Pokemon Ieru Kana, which is essentially the original Poke Rap, showing and naming all 151 of the original Pokemon in card form. Undoubtedly a wonderfully effective marketing gimmick. The song is performed by Imakuni and Raymond Johnson, with some narration from Hiroko Ohashi, who had become a well known announcer in Japan. As you can tell by these images from the music video, it's pretty out there. An instrumental karaoke version of this song is also included at the end of the tape, in case you want to sing it yourself. Hopefully, not alone in a basement. The other songs are the titular Pokemon Kakeru Kana, Hai Asa Desu Yo, Gunya Gunya Gasu Gasu, Ah Marumain, and Crayon de Pokemon. 
songs that teach children how to draw simple versions of the most popular pocket monsters. All these tunes are so damned catchy, and the music videos are a ton of fun to watch, particularly for their sheer creativity and their use of 90s era CG animation. At the very end of the tape is a commercial for the Pokemon card game, with children imitating the performers of the Pokemon rap. It's honestly pretty adorable, and it kind of makes me wish I played more Pokemon as a kid. Sega's foray into 32-bit console gaming had a rocky start in North America that they would never recover from, but in Japan things went a lot smoother throughout the console's lifespan. In late 1996, the company produced the roughly 30-minute Sega Saturn Otoshidama catalog video, distributed primarily to new owners of the system, even coming packed as a bonus with consoles around the time. Otoshidama is the Japanese word for the money kids get from relatives around the new year, stuffed in envelopes like the one shown on the tape's cover, and this gift served to hype up existing and upcoming releases for the system. The video starts off by showing narrated gameplay of titles that were scheduled to come out in the spring of 97, such as The King of Fighters 96, Tengai Makyo, The Apocalypse, Dynamite Deca, and Assault Suit Lanos 2, and then gives a look at some popular games already available on the Saturn categorized by genre. Role-playing games, action games, shooters… there's so much shown the viewer is bound to find something to enjoy. The Sega Saturn Otoshidama catalog video was made when the system was arguably starting to peak, so this tape is a real showcase of how great it was to be a Saturn owner in Japan in the 90s, despite some of the mega hits on its main rival, the PlayStation. Today it's well worth checking out for fans of the Saturn or people who might be getting into the system for the first time, just to get a small but satisfying taste of what the system can offer. At the very end of the video is a collection of FMV cinemas from Virtual Fighter 3, with the proclamation of the game coming out on the Saturn. While the arcade sensation wouldn't become a home experience until the launch of the Dreamcast, it's interesting to think how VF3 might have played and looked on its predecessor, as well as how it might have affected the Saturn's sales. Next up is a similar preview tape to the Saturn one, and for its Nintendo rival at the time, the Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64-bit system found itself in a bit of the opposite situation of the Saturn, with moderate success in North America but experiencing a big slump in its home country of Japan. This 15-minute not-for-sale tape, Nintendo 64 96-97 new software introduction video, the Shinsaku Soft Shoukai video, is harder to come by than the Saturn one as it was distributed at Nintendo's Space World event in November of 1996. A variety of first and third party games are featured throughout, of course over narration, with heavy coverage of major releases like Mario Kart 64 and Star Fox 64, though previews of smaller titles such as Wonder Project J2 are also included. The most interesting thing about this tape to me is that it shows clips from an early build of Zelda 64, some early CG footage of Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon, and a video of Kirby's Air Ride, which would ultimately be cancelled and brought to the GameCube some years later. At the end of this short ride are some special tips and tricks for Wave Race 64, Pilot Wing 64, and Super Mario 64. Anything and everything 64. Well, with that last one, I finally learned how to climb the castle walls without using the cannon after getting 120 stars, something I frivolously attempted many times as a child. How? It's hard to explain just how popular Virtua Fighter was in Japan in the 90s, so maybe this last tape will help illustrate it just a bit. It's the Java T Battle Koshian King of Virtua Fighter 3 King of Kings official tournament video from July 27, 1997 at New Pier Hall. What a title! 
This VHS tape, which retails for 3,500 yen, tax included, provides 57 minutes of edited footage from the open class fighting game tournament referenced in the title. An interesting peek into a relatively early fighting game tournament, a time capsule when such contests were few and far between, unlike what we have today. With this tape, you get to see how the tournament is set up, as well as plenty of gameplay footage from four brackets filled by skilled players. There aren't any real-time reactions from the participants and audience, nor as much pageantry shown until reaching the final rounds of the competition. Congratulations to winner Shinichi Ishida, who sure knows how to have his way with a 436-pound sumo wrestler. For being the best around, he gets a trophy, belt, and a framed picture of Sarah, handed off to him by virtual series creator and just plain Sega legend Yu Suzuki. But perhaps the best prize of all? Hanging with the Java T Bikini Babes. I hope this man got some digits in, then some that night. He earned it as a god among geeks. An extra special treat for Sega fans are two performances by Takenobu Mitsuyoshi, often referred to as the voice of Sega, who sang the theme song for Virtual Fighter 3, Burning Rangers, and yes, Daytona USA. And there you have it, 10 Japanese tapes from two of the biggest and best gaming companies in the 90s, who had one of the fiercest rivalries in all of gaming. In the current year, we know who eventually won the war, but as far as this battle goes, who do you think won? And none of that, we all won because we got so many great games and video game tapes out of the console wars. Bullcrap. Pick a side, coward. I'm just kidding, we did all win, but I'm still interested in hearing which size offerings here you preferred, and whether you think I rigged things because I'm an Intentard or a Sega fan. Thanks for watching this episode of Video Games on Video, and of course, if you want to see these tapes in full, as well as other video game related clips, check out my second channel, The Import Gaming for the Win Dump. If you want to support Import Gaming for the Win, leave a comment, rate the video, share it with a friend or two, become a member, or buy 10 shirts. Links in the description. I'm Jimmy Hoppa, take care.